It's Dylan's KC Barbecue at four Valley locations. Our sports bar in Arrowhead is packed with TVs for the ultimate sports fan. Our Wildlife World Zoo location will have you on the edge of your seat, dining right next to our 60,000 gallon shark tank. Dylan's Bayou at Pleasant Harbor has never ending sunsets, beautiful people, and live music every weekend. And our newest location, Western Trails Ranch, is 12 acres of rodeo fun and live outdoor concerts for the entire family. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue where we're elite, unique, and memorable. We need you now. We so need you now. We need you now. We need you now. now. One day. day. (laughs) Any day now. (laughs) Hey guys, welcome to the She's So Right Show. I am Brandi Barclay and I am sitting next to my amazing co host. Lindsay Graham, the Patriot Barbie. She has been bullied and tortured and canceled by the leftist mob, and that didn't stop her. In fact, now she's on the radio. How about that? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, leftist mob. Um, And I am, I'm Lindsay Graham, the Patriot Barbie. I'm here with my amazing co-host, Brandi Barclay. She is a powerful voice on Faith Talk Radio. She's a strong uh, female empowerment uh, figure in Arizona for representing the Power Soul Experience, the founder of the Power Soul Experience. And uh, she is your average American wife and mom who has had it up to here mm. with the political stuff that's come yeah. into our household. Up to here. Up kind to of here. like kind of like I tried to avoid it and we can't avoid it any longer. I know a lot of you feel the same way. You know, my four years ago left a uh, my career to get into ministry and ministry has left me to this political Mm. place. So here we are. And today's topic, we're we're really trying to kind of do these micro topic because, you know, you can go on rabbit trails and both of her, both of, both of her, both of her, (laughs) both of us can do that. Both of us can go um, rabbit trails. So we decided to break this down into a, like a micro topic and we're going to confront today feminism in the sense of workplace versus stay-at-home moms, so this whole boss babe culture and how it's attacked women more or, you know, really more than empowered women. Um, so we're going to just kind of dive right in with that whole idea. I'm going to point at you. Okay. What, what what did you – so we haven't talked about this. We, we like to leave it's, it for you yeah. guys. Um kind of we're both women we both have been entrepreneurs we both have built successful careers we both have children mine are grown hers are still kind of little but we both get it the pressure to you know in essence we're taught from we were taught from the time we were little kids to conform and perform and succeed and get the career and and I believe more so than you know, have a really healthy marriage, you know, be a really great mom. What's your thought on this? Yeah. So, yeah, when we've talked about talking about breaking down feminism, the first little micro topic of that is it's the, the role that it plays in the traditional marriage and family culture now. So my big beef with the feminist movement, A, that it's become, you know, overrun by the leftist radical mob culture. Uh, they've kind of taken over feminism as their own. My problem is that we're seeing a woke concept of it that there's two roles a woman can play in this in this belief system, right? You can either be a boss babe, a successful you know uh, entrepreneur, and you're out of the home and you're still you're doing mom jobs too, but you're doing you're doing a, a business. And then the other one, the extreme one, is you're a stay at home mom. Well, both of those roles 
are beautiful. Some families have to have a working mom in order to provide for their family. Some moms are single, so they have to work. Mm -hmm. Um, The leftist radical feminism culture says that a woman doesn't have value anymore if she's just a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. And I just can't agree with that. Um, I don't think any woman should have to agree with that. And the entire feminism movement is to empower other women, right? And so uh, to say to another woman, your role as a wife and a mom is not up to par. Mm -hmm. You should be doing something more with your life. You should be earning money. You should be successful like me. I'm successful. I do this, this, (laughs) and this. Well, how not empowering is that to tell another woman she's not enough because she's not doing what the new feminism culture says makes her valuable? Mm. I... I want to take that a whole nother level because, yeah, but no, I mean, this is like, let's bring that even a a step deeper is we're being rather than complimentary to men and our husbands, we're being compared to. Mm -hmm. So if they have this uh, position in the world, we should also have position in the world. And as wives and mothers, we do. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a God-given we, role. We do. <laughs> and when you break down those words like boss, babe, I think of boss um, being this big word in control um, with status, with position, and babe, like your hot stuff. Like this is the new thing, a like, boss, babe, boss, babe. Um, in fact, a few years ago when the motivational world was really expanding, it was all about women in power. And... I was listening to several women on um, PragerU this week, Christina Hoff Summer, Summers and Tammy Bruce, both very, very wise when it comes to, in fact, Tammy Bruce was an advocate for feminism when she was younger. Now she's trying to kind of make that right because feminist has taken on this really, I believe, like a demonic um, turn You know, of course, I'm a woman. Hello. (laughs) Do you think I don't want women to have equal pay and power in the world and, you know, equal rights? We have equal rights. I'm a Hispanic woman who grew up, you know, lower middle class at 14 years old could go to work. And I did. I had the opportunity to go to work. I had the opportunity to get a scholarship. I had the opportunity to build a career. It was hard sometimes. But I had the opportunity, just like the guys, right? Um, Opportunity is all around us. And what I decided to do as a woman was take some time when my kids were young to stay home with them. That was a decision we made as a married couple. In fact, the first year of my youngest daughter's life, my husband and I lived in an apartment without a washer and dryer, drove a car that was older. You know, we we made sacrifices so I could stay home because we felt that that was an invaluable thing to have me home that first year of my daughter's school year or my um first year of my daughter's life to be home. And as my husband succeeded more in business, it gave me more freedom, freedom. Mm-hmm. It gave me more freedom to decide mm-hmm. whether I wanted to stay home or go to work. It didn't take away my freedom because he made more money. Um, okay, so the feminist yeah. the feminist culture says that even though you and your husband agreed on that, right, and you felt blessed in your position and he felt blessed in his position, and you might have both been happy, the feminist culture says from the outside, not knowing you, your husband is controlling you. <laughs> <laughs> he's making he's making all the money, which gives him all the control. You're stuck at home with your little brats. Do it when you could be so much more. What are, what are you giving up to do this? Mm. But they do this with every family because they act like that, that they know that every woman who they think they know that every woman who doesn't rise up to be what they say, then they're then they're lacking that blessing. They're, they don't probably use the term blessing. They're lacking um, that worth, the value. Mm-hmm. Right. But you as a Christian. And as a, a female and as a wife and a mom, you feel value raising your kids. I mean, feminism acts like your kids are a burden. They act like that in every which way. When you said something about uh, when the feminist movement wants equal rights, I think about how they continue to bring up 
uh, we deserve free birth control and free health care and free this because our bodies can get pregnant. <laughs> like, like it's the worst thing ever. Like, it is the greatest gift that God gave us, and he gave it to us. Mm-hmm. And women are like, well, this is such a burden that I can get knocked up. Well, you <laughs> cannot get knocked up. I can think of one really good way not to get knocked up. Uh-huh. But yet, instead of taking responsibility and embracing that amazing gift that women have, they act like it's a burden, and now because of this burden, we demand free tampons and free <laughs> health care and free birth control, and it's... Yeah, we're, le- yeah. We're, le- we're looked at as lesser than, and yep. think of everything you just said, that not just that we aren't worth as much, but that our men are oppressing us. Mm-hmm. We are oppressed. Yeah. Like, be barefoot and be pregnant and don't have a career and be oppressed by your husband, I have never felt oppressed Mm -mm. by my husband. I mean, you know, of course, I would say there's probably men that oppress women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't marry them. How about that? (laughs) that Um, The other thing is, is when we have the privilege of I I heard once when I was pregnant and it wasn't the easiest thing. We have the privilege of partnering with in God with God in this miracle. Mm -hmm. And now it's looked at as the worst possible thing, like you said, and we have, because, you know, the big topic right now is abortion. We will talk about that some other mm, time. That's a rabbit but, trail. But, you know, women, uh, leftist women, feminism laying down in the street saying, sex strike, sex strike. And I'm thinking, you know, why don't you have a sex strike until you a man <laughs> that you sleep with would have a baby with you? Great uh, idea. How about that novel thought? So talking about this whole boss babe culture, feminism, the, you know, we hear all the, about the gender wage gap and how even when women go into work, they make less money. They're making 70 cents to the dollar. And I did a, a deep dive on that. And it was women tend to choose careers that are more nurturing in, you know, overall. Like men, more men decide to go be a heart surgeon and an engineer. Women, even if they're a doctor... They tend to choose pediatric care mm-hmm. or teaching, teaching. Yeah. Or, or some just a lower paying position. And they're and it's like they have a choice. We women can go be engineers. We women can go be cardiac surgeons. Mm-hmm. We choose careers that make us happy that we want to do. And, and instead, we're this gender, this wage gap, you know, <laughs> dig deeper, guys. There, you have to uncover more women want to stay home when their kids are born. More women want to. And if they don't, they have the freedom, right, right. to say well, no. Yeah, and the whole point that they're making is women make less money. Okay, so some women make less money, but again, is it about, well, I have to make as much money because I have to be equal to... We don't have to prove ourselves. I don't have to prove myself to him. I don't have to make the same amount as a man. I am not going to put my resume up next to a man and hope that it lives up so that I can get the same pay. What I care about, most importantly, is that I'm happy in my career and that I chose a career that I love. And if that career makes less money than a man who's chosen a career makes him happy, why is this? Why are we comparing apples to oranges? It doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And if we are making less money, so this is the thing. I think it's as I dug around. You know, if two people are doing the same job, and they're doing it this at the same level with the same amount of time, and the same amount of education, I completely agree. Their pay should be the same. Yep. Absolutely, one hundred percent. As I dug around into the statistics of the this this activism that we're seeing, they're leaving a lot of that out. They're leaving a lot that women actually work are working less hours. Women are taking more time off. Which again, I think that's a decision. I didn't have to take time off to be with my children. I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, my husband could have. We decided to do it the traditional way. Nothing wrong with that. Um, But we're looking at all of the ways that they make us, they're pounding and pounding and pounding this idea that we are less than, that the world deems us less. Mm -hmm. The entire feminism thing. I actually actually downloaded and researched the Wikipedia definition. And the part that really stood out to me says, uh, feminism incorporates the position that societies prioritize the male point of view and that women are treated unjustly within those societies. And that right there encompasses the entire problem that all women, and I'm talking biological women here, all women are immediately born into a victim mentality. Mm. Men treat us differently. 
a male point of view is is valued and rationalized over our point of view that's just entirely i believe untrue Mm -hmm. i believe that there are situations where that happens Mm -hmm. uh chauvinism exists absolutely it does um but to say that the nation as a whole or the world as a whole every female is a victim the minute they come out into the world with women (laughs) you know uh, that they're a victim, mm-hmm. that now we're, our whole life is fighting to keep up with men. And I just, I don't think that's true. I think we are born the way God intended us, free to make our own decisions. We are we are made to create humans and consider that a blessing, not a burden. When we talk about women going into the workforce and being paid a little bit less, potentially because they're off more, because they're having a baby. Well, they're choosing to have a baby. That's a beautiful thing. You don't say, you know, I really want to start a family, but darn it. I demand reparations for the entire situation. I want to get paid the entire time I'm, I'm, you know, pregnant. I want to get paid the entire time I'm off. Uh, what a, why wouldn't women all over the world then just get knocked up at work so they could just get free pay while having a kid? That's the foster system. Uh, <laughs> so funny, rant. so funny because yeah, that you're right. It's they they demoralize the idea of motherhood. Mm-hmm. They demoralize the idea of even. I think there was this article and it was at oh man, I'm trying to remember. Big university, Ivy League. Oh, can't remember. It was about how women, Princeton, I believe. There was an article that came out about women meeting their husband at college, and they just got hammered. I know. Have you have you heard of this? No. Okay. So, huh? I should have <laughs> should have wrote that down. Let's see, what but is basically, in my files it was the idea that how dare you come to college to think that this is just a place to meet your husband. I mean, you know, you're going to meet the person you spend your life with probably at school or at work or in common ground. Why not somewhere where you're studying the same thing? You have like minded, you know, friendships. I mean, now it's all built around a liberal mindset 24 7. Agree with us or you don't get it. Agree with us or you are all of the most degrading words that can come to mind. And I think if feminism is to empower women. It's definitely not empowering all women. I know it's not empowering conservative women. Yep. It's shutting conservative women down all the time. And you look at the whole world as a whole. America, America is the place where women have freedom, freedom to vote, freedom to show our faces, Mm -hmm. freedom to say no to sex instead of being sex slaves all the time whenever we you know somebody wants to use and abuse us we have so much power and authority and i think that this lie that if we're not just like a man working like a man going to school like a man making the same money as the man leaving the kids with a nanny like a man all of the things then we are less than okay you made an excellent point about something that wasn't even on my radar and it's a off topic but you said <laughs> the power to say no to sex the power to refrain from sex etc cetera, etc cetera. we're seeing a feminist movement we've been seeing it for uh, 10 or more years where this is going to get a little bit provocative but women now claim to be um, f- as free in their sex choices as mm-hmm. men and it's empowering okay no more slut shaming I am embracing my sexuality. I'm embracing my body. I'm sleeping around and you can't shame me for it because men do it all the time, right? And that mentality leads women to go out every weekend, go to a bar and say, "Mm, I'll go home with you. No big deal. Fine. No big deal. But for the rest of the women in the world who still want to be taken on a date and treated like a lady Mm -hmm. and wooed and fawned over and respected that entire culture, that entire premise has ruined it for all women. And I'm not single, so I can't tell you this for a fact. I've been single for 10 years. But those single, the single women that I know try to get on dating apps and they try to find a good quality man. And the response is always, you want to chill at Netflix and chill? Uh-huh. <laughs> come over. You want to come over to my house and watch a movie? No, I want you to take me out to a nice dinner. Pick me up. I'm going to dress nice and you're going to treat me right. And no, I'm probably not going to sleep with you on the first date. Uh-huh. But no, that because the the But then they can just movement, swipe. Can't they just yes, swipe Yes, they can left? just move on to the next. <laughs> yeah, or Can't, right okay, or something. Next. To the uh, next girl that will sleep with me because she's embracing her sexuality. Mm-hmm. So now we've lost this entire tradition of men respecting women, looking for a good woman, 
going out there and treating her right and 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 wooing her until he has he has her attention he has her love because of the natural god-given roles of men and women so that's gone yeah exactly so going back to what i was reading what tammy bruce was saying feminism has downplayed the desire for women to have a family mm-hmm. and they've hyped up the rewards of a career and of casual sex. Oh, casual and sex. that's exactly where yeah. I was going. So how perfect is that? Yeah. Because I have young women. My daughters are young women. And I think I'm so grateful. They've got good guys that care for them, love them and aren't just sleeping together. In fact, they're, they both have made commitments to, they're try their best. You. They're going to kill you. I know, right? They're gonna but it's like one of those things where <laughs> we don't talk about abstinence. We don't talk about, you know, um, we talk about how if, if a woman gets pregnant, it's up to her. It's her body. It's her choice to get rid of it because, you know, it. it this is just a big miss. Um, what's the word? It's like a big mistake. Big mistake. And it's a big imposition. And it. And now the woman has... We're not talking about this. Society is talking about this. But this is the thing. It's hyping up career. It's saying, have casual sex. Okay, have casual sex. Don't. But don't. But when you get pregnant, oh, you better be able to run and get that abortion right away. You better not suffer any consequences. You better not take any responsibility. Because the feminist movement also... I saw uh, an article a few weeks ago that, that basically went on and on and on about, guess how a woman gets pregnant? A man. She needs a man to get her pregnant. She doesn't magically become pregnant. So a woman having sex with a man, no matter what happens with her body, it's his fault. They're (laughs) man-shaming men for getting women pregnant. And it's like, um, she also could have not had sex, right? Because she knows, we know, we know that our bodies make babies and we know how they're made. So we can choose... To make sure that that's not going to happen, Mm -hmm. we can refrain, we can use the proper measures, Uh, but in in a feminist culture, to not only go back to doing what they're doing, which is taking that entire miracle and saying it's horrible, it's a it's a burden and not a blessing, but then to take it and say, it's men's fault, no matter what, no matter how it happens, it's a man's fault. Yeah. And if it happens to if it happens, I've been saying third. If it happens to you, well, then everybody needs to support your race to Planned Parenthood to mm-hmm. eliminate this as fast as possible with no judgment, like you said, no consequence. Yep. When I know, as a Christian life coach, there are consequences. There are emotional, spiritual, physical consequences. Whether you want to talk about it or not, there is absolute consequence to having. This, and, but this is the culture. This is go to school, become a man, don't have a baby, don't get married. Oh, live with them first. Try out, you know, test drive the car. This is supposed to be women empowerment. And what I see it doing is eroding the self esteem of women. They're online. You can literally on Instagram put in sexy chicks, and there's a million that'll come all day long. Mm-hmm. And these women are feeling compared to this on one side, okay? This is actually going to be part of our next show. So we're kind of segueing. But this is the idea is we're supposed to be overly sexual. We're supposed to um, not care that we're having sex. Um, We're not supposed to not care about a baby. We're supposed to not care about marriage. We're supposed to um, only care that we're making as much money as men. We're as strong as men. We're as powerful as men. We have position like men. Basically, what feminism is doing is saying, don't be a woman. Okay. And... (laughs) Isn't that what it's what they're saying? Yeah, just and by don't the way, be men, a woman. And men can, but men can be women too. You don't be a woman, but <laughs> please let men be women. And yeah, um, but another thing that you just touched on was um, when you when feminism dictates that your value is placed on casual sex, the looking the way you look, and social media is helping to cater to this too. You're working towards an unachievable goal to be the most attractive person in the world, the most available female in the world, the female that every guy wants to sleep with. Like, there's always going to be skinnier, prettier, more makeup, better makeup, nicer clothes, longer legs. It's unachievable to look for your worth in being the guy that you want every guy to swipe right on you or whatever it is. Mm. There's no joy in that, and that's an unattainable goal. 
our goal, feminist goal, should be empowering women to be comfortable in their identity. And that means every woman's identity. Mm -hmm. Your choice to be a stay-at-home mom, your choice to be a mom and love that blessing and embrace it. And uh, feminism is really just just embracing those that agree with them. Mm -hmm. I want to cut my hair, dye it purple, be lazy and sloppy, and I want men to love me for that. Yeah, and if you don't... You're an oppressor. You're 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 an oppressor. Yes. You know, isn't it funny how many times just in this conversation, I feel like we've contradicted ourselves because there's so much contradiction in it. Mm -hmm. It's it's really one of those things where if I could get a hold of a young woman, any young woman, I would say God designed you as a woman to be a woman, to be a compliment to a man. And don't and and. There's so much beauty in motherhood. There's so much beauty in a a strong partnership and a strong marriage that didn't start off with a swipe left. Okay, (laughs) and it's like there's so much. um, This is the deal, guys. If we go back to God's word and we obey and we see his design, we can't help but fall in line with with truth. And the truth, again, sets us free from all this chaos. It just sets us free from all this chaos and all these lies about what women should and should not be. We know at our core what we should be. It's in the Bible. God bless you all. God bless the USA. And we'll talk to you next time. Catch us next Saturday, 1.30 p.m. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue at Four Valley locations. Our sports bar in Arrowhead is packed with TVs for the ultimate sports fan. Our Wildlife World Zoo location will have you on the edge of your seat, dining right next to our 60,000 gallon shark tank. Dylan's Bayou at Pleasant Harbor has never ending sunsets, beautiful people, and live music every weekend. And our newest location, Western Trails Ranch, is 12 acres of rodeo fun and live outdoor concerts for the entire family. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue where we're elite, unique, and memorable.